Alyssa Jean's Reviews, and welcome to my monthly transition video, trans life update, life as a trans woman video. Still haven't come up with a good name for these types of videos. I do them once a month uh, with a different topic each month, and uh, sometimes I will also give a little update on my HRT hormone replacement therapy which will be the case this month. I'll give a little bit of an update on how that is going for me but then I will dive into the main topic this month which is dating as a trans woman with a particular focus on dating apps. I did a dating as a trans woman video a few months ago. I don't remember exactly when that was. Um, but this one is more focused particularly on using dating apps <laughs> as a trans woman. Uh, specifically me, I'm not claiming to have the experience of every trans woman in the world, just kind of my experience to be perfectly honest with you. Although I do think a lot of things that I will talk about uh, will be relatable to anyone, regardless of gender identity or sexual orientation or anything like that, uh, who has done dating apps because I have had conversations with people and I know there's a lot of commonalities and a lot of common frustration amongst people who use dating apps, uh, no matter what your gender identity, sexual orientation, etc., etc., is. And uh, yet we keep using them. But here we are. So uh, let me go ahead. First, I'm going to give my brief HRT update, and then I'll get into the main topic of this month's video. Okay, I'll go ahead and start with a brief HRT update uh, this month. I do have something to talk about. I don't always, every month. Um, so my update is that I went to um, get my labs, as I do every three months. You know, get my blood drawn to, to check my levels on my estradiol and my testosterone. Testosterone is, is the same. It's roughly 12 to 13, uh, which is 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 about where, where it should be for me and uh, my uh, estradiol is interesting because um, the highest I've ever had before is 198 uh, pg per milliliters I think picograms per milliliters it's like a very very small unit of measurement it's like one trillionth of a gram I don't know exactly what that's supposed to mean but I do know what the normal range is supposed to be um, my doctor says to shoot for uh, 200s, like low to, to mid 200s. Um, the highest I've ever had is 198. The last one I had was 156, uh, and three months ago in July. And my doctor was like, it's a little low, but it's all right. Um, but uh, as I've mentioned in previous videos, I had to change the kind of estradiol that I am injecting. Uh, because of the estradiol was, um, there was a shortage of it because of Pfizer. Pfizer is having some shortage of it. So they had to switch me to estradiol valerate, which is more concentrated. So I was taking 0.25 milliliters of it instead of one milliliter of the kind that I was taking before. Um, so I've been doing that for about three months. And uh, so keep in mind, my highest ever was 198 came back as 695 and I was like what <laughs> I thought it was a mistake um because honestly I feel like I would feel something drastically different if the levels were that drastically different and I can't say that I have I mean the normal emotional up and downs and you know about once a month or so I get this really like really hard emotional up and downs uh, really hard to control my emotions for two or three days uh, I kind of call it my <laughs> my monthly trans cycle um, my monthly PMS monthly period whatever you want to call it uh, without the bleeding just with the emotions um, that that happens and um, I don't know I, I don't feel like there was anything drastically different from normal 
Maybe I just wasn't paying attention. I don't know. So I was very surprised it was that high. Anyways, uh, my doctor said that uh, uh, that's extremely high, very elevated. In fact, he wrote very elevated in all caps and um, in danger for blood clot. So we lowered it to uh, from 2.5 milliliters to 0.1 milliliters. And um, he wants me to go back and get labs again six weeks after the previous ones uh, rather than three months uh, just to make sure we can get that in check but uh hopefully i don't get a blood cut i was really surprised because I, I didn't notice like i didn't feel drastically different like that um so that's that on the right side i think my uh breasts are not done developing i thought that they i just assumed they were because i reached the two-year mark Two years is roughly, uh, it's a common, you know, time where they stop developing, but they definitely are, are still going a little bit. So that's cool. <laughs> um, can't imagine I'm ever going to get a C cup or anything like that, but still, I'll take what I can get. So uh, that's, that's all I got for that one. Now let's go ahead and get into the main topic, which is dating apps. Wonderful lovely topic that it is let's talk about dating apps but first a little just a little background a little review uh on my situation so um i uh used to consider myself a heterosexual male since transitioning i very much have thought of myself as bisexual um i guess technically I, i'm pansexual because Though I've never actually dated or, or been with anyone outside of the uh, gender binary, um, I don't know why I wouldn't. I'm more about um, finding the right person that fits with me uh, than any, uh, you know, any person that fits in any particular gender category. Um, I definitely lean toward and prefer more feminine leaning people. Uh, so a non-binary person who presents slightly more feminine, uh, who maybe who's female birth, um, probably more likely uh, than a non-binary person who leads masculine, um, and definitely um, female over male um, with cis women probably be, being at the top of my wish list. However, I am certainly open to dating anyone and uh, recently I have find myself becoming more and more attractive attracted to um, cis men uh, also trans men um, so here's here's the thing in the last year or so I'm really starting to discover um, how queer I, I really am because I used to always just think of myself as heteronormative and as I transition, as I, as, as I discover myself more through my transition, I um, am much more attracted to more, more and more queer people. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, so for those of you who've watched my Star Trek reviews, I did a review of Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Earlier this year, there was an episode that featured an actor named uh, Jesse James Keitel, who um, I immediately um, just fell in love with and just well, like just found her so sexy in the queerest of ways. Like she was, she just exuded this particular type of queer sexiness uh, that just really drew me and. And my brother was watching that same episode, and he didn't even catch that she was necessarily queer or trans uh, immediately. And then when someone pointed it out, he's like, "Oh, okay, I can see that." Um, but he didn't like it. Didn't she didn't exude queerness to him? But to me, like she just exuded this like really particular sexy kind of queerness. Uh, and she, by the way, uh, considers herself non-binary, non but uses she/her pronouns. Uh, and she's trans, but she's non-binary trans, but it's not gonna tell you whether she's female at birth or male at birth, and I love that. <laughs> uh, I'm so infatuated with this person, 
But I have found in general that I'm just starting to be more and more attracted to a particular type of queerness that I wasn't attracted to um, before. Uh, and yet I'm still finding myself a little more attracted to just normal cis men. Uh, but normal cis men, pfft, probably not, just probably not going to happen to me. I find them, some of the, uh, some of them physically attractive, but attractive, but um that's probably not gonna happen so let me get into a little bit of my my dating app experience with kind of the different gender groups um that i look at yeah so i've kind of stopped um using dating apps that really really push the cis men here's been my experience with cis men um first of all 99 percent of the ones that i see left 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 i'm just not <laughs> interested in um but the the few that i do match with here's been my experience they fall in one of two categories generally one uh they unmatch with me immediately presumably because they look more closely at my profile and realize that i am trans you go oh fuck <laughs> and then uh, unmatch with me um i even had one guy one time where we actually had um, some conversations and we were about to meet up and I said before we meet up you do get that I'm trans right and then he disappeared <laughs> so um, yeah they don't pay attention and then once they figure it out they're like oh fuck uh, I don't want to date a chick with a penis so uh, I'm, I'm out of here um, and then there's the other category of cis men who very much do want to date a trans woman but they look at me as a sexual object a fetish just a sex toy basically um and they're not interested in me they're not interested in talking to me or having conversations or connecting with me in any real way they just want to use me as their sex toy and um i'm not gonna lie and say that i haven't engaged in that once or twice just because I was curious on my so I was feel like it was a mutual using <laughs> of each other because I want just wanted to see what that was like for me um, but I am no longer interested in that uh, I am exclusively looking for um, some kind of con connection even if it's a brief connection um, I need something um, so which has been my history before then. I really made a couple of exceptions in order to overlook my usual rule, <laughs> just in general, where I usually need some kind of emotional connection, even if it's just a small one or a brief one, even if it's a one night one, I need something there. Um, I would, certainly we need to have some conversations and connect in some way. Um, so not getting that, also finding that, um, you know, queer, bisexual, pansexual men, pansexual men, uh, I would be interested in because then I, I feel more comfortable that they are open to anyone. Um, very rare. Don't see a lot of them. <laughs> so um, it's mostly uh, men who identify as cis straight men. And though that has been my experience so far, and that's what the few who I do match with. Um, most of them I swipe left on and there are there are others that I swipe right on who I never swipe swipe right on me as well so but the few that I've met with that's been my experience now um, with women with well I'll start with trans women I have matched with a couple of trans women over the last couple of years usually we just end up being friends actually trans women and cis women is, is the same <laughs> what it is what happens is as really we're like yeah i mean there's no romantic whatever whatever here but let's be friends cool yeah i because i generally want to make more queer friends so um but what generally happens is that just kind of fades away because uh, at least on my end, there's a lot of it, it takes a lot of emotional energy to meet a new person, especially if you're meeting them in that way online. Um, and I kind of already have the friends quota taken care of. Like I'm fine in the friends department. So I would like more queer friends, but just friends in general, it's like I don't know. I have a bunch of those already. Some really, really, really good ones, really close ones. <laughs> so 
I don't know that I have the energy to put into it, especially when the other person is also not putting in that energy because they may be in the same place in life. So it's not like we don't like each other or there's anything personal. It's just that just kind of fades off. I mean, that's like what making friends on dating apps has been my experience, that it just sort of fades away, fizzles away. Um, I have even hung out with one or two of those type of people um, and have a great time. And then just kind of fizzles off because we each have our own lives. We each have our own set of friends already and just don't have the energy to make a new friend, I guess. So um, I think that would be a challenge. That, that has been my experience with with women on dating apps since transitioning for the most part that's not always true i have gone out on some dates i actually did date a woman for about what was that two or three months i think at the beginning of this year end of last year coming into the beginning of this year um i dated a woman for a couple months who i met on a dating app and i have been on a couple proper dates not just friend dates um with women so i'm not saying that's 100 percent of them um i'm just saying that is the most common experience uh that i've had now people who identify outside of the um, gender binary um haven't had a lot of conversations with them although just yesterday i did start a conversation with a individual who identifies that way um don't know where that'll go or if we'll even continue the conversation or not um but um that has not been a common thing but as i said like I'm just looking for a person that I connect with, um, that I can vibe with, uh, and, and I'm going to need to find attractive too. I definitely, um, I am not a sapiosexual nor a dem demisexual. I'm neither of those things. Um, so I do find people physically attractive. Um, but, uh, I also, you know, I still kind of need the, the emotional connection too. So I don't know. So that, that's that been my experience so far. Now I kind of want to talk about some of the particular sites. And if you guys like in the comments have any particular apps that you would suggest, let me know. I have tried uh, queer specific apps uh, and the more generalized like everybody apps. Uh, so let me just run through some of those. All right, so as I said, I've recently given up on Bumble. It's like, 99.99% um, cis men that come up, even though I'm set for bisexual. Every once in a while, I would change the setting so that I'm only looking for women. But then, like, 10 of them would come up and then say, you have run out of people. So <laughs> there's, there's not a lot of queer women on Bumble in my area, I guess. Um, so maybe that tells me something. Maybe I shouldn't be using it. Um, and, yeah, I don't know. And that was the site where, that was the app where I was getting the most, like, uh, sexual fetishes or um, ditching me immediately once they realize I'm, I'm not trans or that I am trans. Um, so I was like, I'm done with it. Why am I wasting my time on this one? Like, I went waste way too much time on that app. So that one's gone. Um, I gave up on Tinder a very long time ago because Tinder um, was confused by the fact that I said... Um, that I was looking for gay or bisexual women, um, but, you know, straight or bisexual or pansexual men. And it kept giving me straight up gay men. Like that was like the most, like 90% of the people they would show me are straight up gay men. That does me no good. Like Tinder is just broken. I mean, I have a lot of problems with Tinder, um, from before when I was, you know, using it as a heterosexual male, as I perceived myself at the time. Um, but this, this just, it's just a bad one. So that one, long, long gone. I haven't used that one in a while. Um, I like OkCupid in theory. I like it. It definitely seems to be more, um, uh, queer friendly. It is very poly friendly, which I am not. Um, but, uh, I don't, you know, don't judge people who are. Um, it's very poly friendly. It's very queer friendly. The problem with OkCupid okay is nobody pays for it. <laughs> they keep raising the price. I used to use it back in the day when it was free, completely free, and you got all the features for free. Um, and then I got married, and then I came back to it, and then after the divorce, and all of a sudden it was nine ninety nine per month. 
then it was $19.99 per month, then it was $29.99 per month. It is currently $54.99 per month. Uh, and you can, that's if you're just getting a one month subscription. You could get like the six month subscription and it's $29.99 per month, um, but you're paying it all at once. And why? Why is that worth it? Um, now, you used to be able to get around that. You used to still be able to, if you match with somebody, uh, or you used to actually still, even if you don't match with somebody, if you see, uh, if someone writes you an intro, a message, you could see it. But now, I don't see it. Like, if you if you know OkCupid, you go to your likes page and you're not paying for it, it'll have all the blurry, all the people will be blurry. And <laughs> um, you can tell because it'll be like a blurry profile, but it'll have like lines at the top, like they wrote something. So that means somebody wrote something to you. And you used to be able to see all of that. Now you can't see it. Um, so I feel like nobody pays for it. And now they made it harder for you to see messages from uh, other people who aren't paying for it. So it's like kind of worthless <laughs> if you're not paying for it. And it is also um, way too expensive. Um, especially, I still remember when it was free. <laughs> it was like it was free back in the day. This was like 2005 through 2010 when I used it. It was free. And then when I came back in 2017, it was still it was only $9.99 a month. And it's just going up 10 bucks like every few months <laughs> since then. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, a, I still have my account. I don't really um, engage with it much. Um, I think, um, I think the favorite one that I've, that I have found is Hinge. It definitely is more queer oriented. It is one of those that is for generally everybody. It's not a queer specific one. Um, in fact, one of my cis female friends told me about it. Um, she's gone on a lot of dates uh, using it. Um, but it, it also has people who seem to, generally speaking, be more serious and like more looking for relationships uh, rather than just hookups. Um, of course, it's not going to be the case of 100% of the people on it, but um, it seems seems generally to be the case. So I've only been using this one for a couple weeks, but I, I generally like it. It also does show me more women and, and female identifying individuals than uh, some of the other sites, certainly Bumble. <laughs> so um, I like it, and it's I, ha I haven't gone on any dates on it yet, but I've had some conversations uh, with people on it. Um, and I'm more interested in it and more, um, engaged in the people's profiles, even if I'm not, if nothing happens of it, uh, I still like people's, the profiles are better. So that's probably been my favorite one. Now, as far as the queer specific ones, I don't know. I've tried a couple of lesbian ones. There's one that I tried, I can't remember the name of it, that definitely was not trans friendly. It said nothing about trans anywhere on it and nobody in the profile said they were trans. So I got, I didn't, I didn't last on that one very long. Uh, and I, you know, I, I don't know. There's some that are trans friendly. They say they are, but it just doesn't, I don't think that like, uh, there's a lot of trans women on it and people are interested in trans women. So I haven't done those. Um, there's also been some, trans specific um dating sites or dating apps and most of those um are for cis dudes who have fetishes specifically in fact the first one that i ever did was like just blatantly <laughs> for um cis men to find their sex toys and uh yeah i didn't i was on that one for a minute uh, until i figured out really what it was and like oh no and no no um and there's a Another one that I did that wasn't as bad. I think it was like transgenderdate.com or something. I don't know. But it still was that. It wasn't it was like it hit it better. It wasn't as blatant about it. But that's still who was on there. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, I don't know. Um, I guess the best queer one that I've found is Lex, which is a not your typical dating app. It's more like an old uh, Craigslist style thing where you post ads and it can be ads about whatever you want it to be. Um, it can be who's going to this show next week. Who who wants to have sex with me? Who wants uh, who wants to lick my pussy? Who wants to or um, who's got uh, 
who's got a dress I can borrow? Who's got, you know, or do it could just be simple things. It's very, some of them are very sexual and some of them are just like very basic. Um, and there's also the missed connections that reminds me of the Craigslist of old and uh, those are really entertaining to, to read through. Um, so it's a fun app to read through. Haven't made any connections with people on it because I only made one post like and it was several months ago the first time I was on Lex and I stopped it for, for a while and just recently got back on it again. Um, and through there I met a person who um, uh, was into Star Trek and we talked a little bit but it just I don't know it was didn't go very it didn't go anywhere and then I got off the app and then came back later but uh yeah it's it's an entertaining one it's fun to read through but not necessarily good for meeting people I've also found that most of the people on there are younger they're into different things than I am there's no other hippies deadhead fish fan heavy people on these apps they're all like very queer very into punk rock and indie rock and um, musicals and and playing video games all night and D and D and things that I'm not into. Like it's all this is the, and they're all younger. They're in their twenties or thirties. Um, I'm nearly fifty, so it's like not a whole lot of people that I can connect with on that app. But I don't know, it's fun to read through. But you know, if anyone knows of any good <laughs> queer apps for um, middle aged queer people. Let me know, because I haven't found them. All right, I think that's enough rambling. I had this idea that I would like go through and complain about all of the bad profiles that I've seen, that I know it's not just me, that there's there's a lot of commonalities uh, with other people, uh, such as the dudes holding the fish, the dudes who look like serial killers, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. I just don't think I have an energy to go through all of that. But if you've done a dating app, you'd know what I'm talking about. Perhaps I'll do a follow-up video at some point and talk about that. Uh, I think that will be it, though, for this month's video. Uh, join me next month where uh, the topic will be something I haven't decided on yet. <laughs> and uh, uh, it will be post-election, so it's possible it could be a little more political if I have the energy for that. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. Um, so the best way to find out what it'll be is subscribe, uh, ring the bell for notifications. Also, as a bonus, if you happen to be into Star Trek, House of the Dragon, Star Wars, nerdy things like that, I do reviews as well on my channel. In fact, that's mostly what I do on my channel, so you should check out all of that, and I will see you really soon. Thank you, everybody, and goodbye. <laughs>